if I tell the client you need to do this, the shortfall for retirement is $2 million and you need to start saving now, he won't buy into that because telling is not selling. Questioning is selling. If I ask questions and he has to come up with the answer himself, or he will tell me, Subhash, you know, uh, my children are going to go to school in, in 15 years' time and I want them to go to the US to study. I need to acquire at least half a million dollars. I said, is that important to you? He said, yes, it's very important to me. Then I asked him, why is it important to you? And he gave a whole bunch of reasons uh, because I never had the opportunity. I want to give it to my children. So these are what we call hot buttons. So I know he is emotionally connected to his future. For some people, they may say, I want to accomplish things in their future, but they are not emotionally connected to it. The only way if I'm going to come back and do recommendations is he needs to be emotionally connected to his future. So if I can get him emotionally connected, then when I come back and give him a solution, here, this is how you can acquire half a million dollars by setting aside this amount of money, and this will ensure your children get the education that you would like them to have then closing or the recommendation goes very smoothly instead of me just showing him a product. The only way I can get clients emotionally connected is I need to ask him a lot of questions about his future. Why is retirement important to him? Why is providing a good education for his children important to him? And I get him emotionally connected to it. And I do that by asking questions. A lot of why, how, what. And once he's emotionally connected, when I come back with my recommendation, he automatically sees the importance of getting this done. So I lead my clients to make a buying decision by asking lots of questions. I have a good friend of mine. In fact, he's one of my best friends. Um, very early in the career, he became a client of mine. And I went through this process with him about setting his goals in the future and um, um, the factual questions. So during the questioning time, I asked him what needs to happen in your future for you to feel happy with your progress. And he told me, you know, I want to I have a good career. Um, he was working for Nike at the time and uh, he, he was married. He says he's worried that uh, he wants, needs to provide a good life for his wife in the future. So I asked him a whole bunch of questions. He didn't see the need for getting uh, critical illness cover and uh, hospitalization cover. But after I asked him a bunch of questions, he realized that if he ever gets critical illness, it's going to impact his career and it's going to impact his, his family life. So he said, okay, fine, I'll go ahead and get the cover. So he bought a 300,000 critical illness cover and he got a hospitalization plan. Just a couple of years after that, uh, he went on a trip overseas and he came back with severe food poisoning. And he calls me up one night, like 11 p.m. and says, Subhash, uh, I'm not well. I'm, I'm in a public hospital. And I told him, you're covered. He said, I've been waiting there for six hours. I said, go straight to the private hospital, you're covered. So he went there and they diagnosed him with aplastic anemia. And uh, it's one of the critical illness. So he was obviously depressed, uh, but he was pleased that because he was covered for critical illness when we paid out 300,000 and he couldn't work for the next three years. So the income, the payout helped him to sustain his life for three years. The medical cover was fully covered, right? And he was very young when he bought the policy. He was like 28 years old. And the event happened when he was in his late 30s. So to this day, he's thankful that he got the coverage when he needed it because when he was about to buy it, he still couldn't see the real need for it, but he thought it was important to have. <laughs>